That thing is burning your drag. This week on Kentucky Afield. Daddy, I got one. Daddy, I got one. It's Father's Day weekend, so we're celebrating with some family fishing. Look how big that bluegill is. And one of Chad's kids' favorite meals. Doesn't get much fresher than this. Fish tacos. Next. Pretty good one, actually. Sandra was introduced to fishing by her dad and later use that inspiration to become a professional bass angler. There you go. We'll hear her story, catch some fish, and more. Look that at That is em. pretty wild. Then, Kentucky's elk is producing some impressive bulls. We're gonna take a look at one that tops the charts. 407, 408, what it grows. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Yeah, we got one, sweet. Yeah, muskrat? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> what do you know about that, man? That's a good fish, man. Nice male, small mouth. Healthy, pretty color. Cody, here. Find us one more good fish, Cody. As biologists, we, we catch ducks and we place bands on them. And it's just a really excellent place to see cottonmouths. Like that was pretty fun. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Kentucky Afield. I'm your host Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Taking your family fishing is the best way I know how to spend Father's Day. And taking your catch to the table, well, that's just a bonus. All right, hop down. All right, you ready? Here, Campbell, here's your fishing pole. Listen, these already have hooks on them, so be careful, okay? Okay. Campbell, can you get the crickets? Yes, sir. walk down here and try out here by this big tree. You guys ready to catch some fish? Yeah. All right, we got all kinds of area right here. The fish are probably gonna be about 10 or 15 feet off the bank. Campbell, you kind of know enough of what you're doing. You can walk around and cast, okay? Yeah. Oh my gosh, he's a fat. Fat crickets? Fat crickets. All right, Leo, we're gonna put you just, a, you got a shorter rod and reel. This, I got, yay! I got a little the, bit shallow. Daddy, more I got shallow. the biggest one. You know what that has to mean. A big, fish. a big fish. Hopefully. You know what you're doing, right? Yeah. When that goes down, jerk it and then reel them in. Leo, you got a bite. Go. <laughs> oh my gosh. You've already got one. It looks like a big one. <laughs> that thing is burning your drag. Let me hold, stop for one second. Now go. Let's see what you've got. You got him. Really? Oh my goodness, Leo. Yay! Look how big that bluegill is. Oh my goodness. Can we keep it? Can we keep it? Can we keep it? What has your sister got? What have you got there? I'm not sure. You have got a massive catfish. I thought you had the biggest bluegill of all time. You got a 10 pound catfish. Pull it up, pull it up. Reel it some more. Get it up here, Dad. Off. Hey, spit it out right there, huh? Yeah. Campbell, was that fun? Yeah. <laughs> I got one. You got another one, Leo? Yeah. That's a big male bluegill. That's a really big, Leo. Good job. I'll tell you what, now that I see how big some of these male bluegills are, we'll just keep a couple of males and we'll throw all the females back. I think I have a bluegill. Woo! That's a good one, Campbell. Get ready, Leo. You got a bite. Jerk it. Jerk it. You got him. Whoa! What do you think about that? Got another. <laughs> None of them are small. They're all big. I don't know what you have, but that looks like a big fish. <laughs> it's a bluegill. Look at that fish, Leo. This bluegill is bigger than your face. Look at that. And it's the size of yours. <laughs> I mean, that. these are just... You talk about catching bluegill as big as a pie plate. Look at that. That is huge. What a pretty fish, Leo. Shake him down. 
hey, I've had a great time. This has been a great Father's Day for me watching you guys catch these fish. I'm ready for a taco. What do you think? Yeah. All right. We got our fish in here and they're all filleted up. My kids love fish tacos because it's a little healthier take on fish and it's a great way to make a few fish go a long way. I start out by making my cabbage slaw. Let's get this cabbage started here. And I'm gonna cut this really, really, really fine. So there we go, that's probably enough. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some really, really hot water on that and strain it out. I'm just gonna pour this on the cabbage and let it sit there for a few minutes. Like this, this will take the coolness and a little bit of the crunch that's a bit much, take that out. So we're gonna let that set. It will green up real well too when you do this. All right, while this sets here for a few minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and take the fish and I'm gonna chunk them. By chunk them, I mean just like dice them up. And this just helps them cook really, really fast and allows me to get a lot of seasoning on each piece. Doesn't get much fresher than this. Now, I'm gonna take the slaw now that's in this boiling water and I'm gonna go ahead and drain it. All right. Now, I'm gonna pour a little bit of apple cider vinegar in here. For about as much apple cider vinegar as I put in, I'm then gonna add cold water, just so it doesn't overpower it. Put that in there, and then pepper. And this is just a simple slaw. That's really, really good with fish. Like I said, it adds a little bit of tartness. I'm gonna add some heat, and it just makes a really, really, really good simple slaw. And essentially, that's it. We're gonna let that set aside, and it'll be ready to go when the fish is done. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get an avocado sliced up. Avocado is obviously really, really good on fish sandwiches. It also is really good with spice. Tabasco on fish tacos for me is the way to go. It's time now to start getting this fish ready. I'm gonna put quite a bit of this Kevin Deers on here. All right, I'm gonna put about the same amount of this Cajun Shake here. And that's about it. This has salt and pepper and all kinds of spices in it. The next thing is to take this over and I'm gonna put it on there for two or three minutes. I like to put in about as much as I'm gonna put on a taco. Push a little olive oil into it. Pull it up in there real good. Flip it. A few minutes on the other side and it's done. So while this is hot, I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese on there. I'm going to get a little bit of this cabbage slaw that we've made. Put it on there, slice to avocado. Gotta have some salsa. I like salsa that's got a lot of cilantro. Then sour cream if you wish. I like it just like this. Put a little bit of hot sauce on it. And that's it. It's about as simple as it gets. Put your slaw on there and it's ready to go. It's great served with a side of rice or black beans. And I'll tell you what, if you go out and you catch a few fish and you're like, I don't have enough to deep fry and give everybody a big mound of fried fish, try this. Your kids will probably absolutely love it. And it is fantastic. My kids' favorite way to eat fish. Really good. For all you fathers out there that enjoy taking your sons fishing, don't forget your daughter, because you never know what you may inspire.
My dad will take credit for all of my fishing and love. <laughs> But my grandmother is actually, I think, the reason why I love fishing so much. I remember she used to catch bluegill off the bank while we were camping. And I believe what happened was she set it up. There was already a fish on the hook, but she made me believe I caught it. <laughs> that never and, happened. Yeah. Not with kids. <laughs> and then it was done. It was done. Then suddenly it wasn't so much that I wanted to catch fish. I wanted to catch more than grandma, and that's when the competition came in. I you got, got a bass. You got a fish. You got something on here. That's so exciting. <laughs> Pretty good one, actually. Yeah, it's not killing him. I might grab that net under your feet there, if you don't mind. There you go. Thank you. What a nice fish. Hey, we'll get. We'll start off with that. Not a bad fish. What do you think? Three pounds? Sure. I'll go with that. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So there you go. Caught it on a little jig here. A little baby advantage jig. Give it another go here in a second. Try to catch a couple of them. I think that's a great idea. All right, hop up here and get you one. Uh-oh, here we go. I don't know, I don't think he's a very big one. Oh, he's a good one. No, he's a big one. No, he's good. No, he's bad. Oh, he's a fighter. That's a pretty good fish. Yeah. Let me get the net. See, I told you they had a bigger appetite yeah. this morning than... Very first cast. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. Nice job. He liked it so much, he Very he first cast very with nice that worm. Yeah. And, uh, not only did he bite it, he took it. Yay. That's a good fish. Happy first, day. First cast a little bit deeper. Yeah. So maybe we're getting a pattern here. That's right. We're good. We're going to let him go, though. Nice job. Yeah. I'll take it. Go on, buddy. Mm. Sandra, you started fishing with your dad at a really young age, and unfortunately, you lost your dad a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was, it was awful. Daddy and I always fished together. We grew up here on Kentucky Lake. Daddy was diagnosed August 23rd, three years ago, with stage four uh, colon cancer, metastasized to his liver, oh, with God. potential spots on his lungs and other various places. We miss him so much. It gives you a really scary perspective of how non-prejudice that cancer really is because my dad never drank, never smoked, never did drugs. He was very fit, very healthy. You know, mama always cooks good, nice, you know, homemade meals and what can happen to anybody? You don't, you can live the perfect healthy lifestyle and it's still gonna, it's gonna creep in and get you if it finds a way. So oh, yeah. you just have to be thankful for every day that we're given and do the things that you love to do. It's an Asian carp. Asian carp. These are these are silvers, and these need to be eradicated from this yeah, lake. Yeah, they do. So. I think the raccoons are really wanting it to, for dinner. <laughs> hey, we come out here to bass fish, and lo and behold, my bow happens to be in the boat. Well, and we see these school of these silvers come up. This is a very little fish. These yeah, things it is. get 20, 30 pounds, and we need them out of this lake. Yeah. So. Look that at is them. pretty wild. That is crazy. Feeding, Look how happy they are. We're feeding the native wildlife with, the, with the invasives. One fish at a time. So hey, throw that bow in your boat. Check you never out. know. On a slow day, you never know what fun you may, you may get into. Isn't that great? After being involved with fishing with your dad for a long time, you, you made it up and, and started fishing the FLW. Tell me a little bit about that experience. I mean, for, for, a, for a young girl that's maybe on a bass fishing team right <laughs> now, Tell them a little bit about that transition. What I would say to a young girl that's looking to go out there is, you know, don't, don't, don't set any, don't set any limits. You know, it's kind of like any other sport. Race your own race. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be as good as some of the other people that have been out there doing it for years. Don't mm -hmm. compare yourself with them. Use it as an opportunity, you know, to go in the back of the boat, start there, learn from some of the best in the world. Don't be intimidated because they're going to be there to help you too. You know, it's, nobody's judging you. Mm -hmm. Go out there, grab a rod, grab a reel, you know, and just learn. Use that opportunity. Yeah, that's a nice little fish. It's so happy. It's a Get happy bass. Woo! I don't think it's a keeper. I got him. You got him? Yeah. There you go. 
Nice. Yay right for fishing. That, I told you we'd catch a little bass around here. Yeah. Right there on that lay down we were talking about. Right where it's supposed to be, isn't that funny? Yeah. Oh, that's Very nice. Kentucky. How'd lay that thing hit? Nice. Pile drive it pretty good? Yeah, he said, I like it and I'm gonna eat it. Very nice. Hi little guy, thank you. Thanks, you can go on back now. Oh. Your dad loved Kentucky Fields. He did. And you wanted to come do this show it's because exactly your dad. That's exactly why I'm here. And I've told a couple, I mean, I've told a couple close people that I was, you know, filming with you guys today. And, you know, that's the main reason why I'm here. It's like my dad loved watching Kentucky Field because it was, it's just such a true show of, you know, our area and, and Kentucky. And he loved Kentucky Lake and he loves hunting and fishing. And so whenever the show would come on, it was like bringing a piece of his heart and his home to him through his oh, TV yeah. when he couldn't be out there doing it himself, you yeah, know? Yeah. And so uh, I just always remember when I was a kid, you know, dad would always be like, you need to call them, you need to be on their show, da, da, da. And I was like, no, dad, it's, you know, it's fine. <laughs> so of course, when the opportunity came across, you know, this, this show, I wanted to do that for my dad because he would be so proud to see his daughter um, fishing on his lake on Kentucky Field, so I'm doing it for Dad. That's great. Mm -hmm. Sandra, it's been a pleasure fishing with you today. We knew the conditions are going to be tough, but you know what? We've had a lot of fun. You know, any day on the water is a good day on the water, and it's been a good day with you, Chad. I'm so glad to be out here with you. Well, I appreciate you coming out, and I hope that any female that's like, man, I'm not sure if that's for me, can kind of hear your story and say, you know what, I need to get back out there and get after it. Never too old to go fishing. That's right. Never too young either, That's right. really. Amen. Well, thanks for coming. It's thanks been for fun. having me. Now let's check in and see who's catching what and where in this week's fishing report. This is Marcy Anderson with the fishing report for Southeast Kentucky. Fishing has been slow at Laurel River Lake lately, but some bass are being caught at night and in early morning hours on top water. On Lake Cumberland, we're hearing some reports of walleye being caught on the main lake near mouths of the creeks. Try fishing in 20 to 25 foot depths using bottom bouncers rigged with night crawlers. On the Cumberland tailwater, low flows in the morning hours have made for some good fishing conditions, but check with the TVA website to keep updated on the latest generation schedule. Also, Rock Creek, Cane Creek, Bark Camp Creek, as well as the Lower River Lake Tailwater were recently stocked with rainbow trout. They can be caught on a variety of lures, including small spinners, worms, and corn. So good luck and good fishing. This is Rob Rold in the Northwestern Fishery District. Rough River Lake and Nolan River Lake are both at Summer Pool. Bass fishing has been good at both lakes. At Nolan Lake, white bass are starting to get in the jumps. Walleye fishing has also been pretty good at Nolan the last couple of weeks. At Rough River Lake, hybrid striped bass have been active. Anglers have been catching several. We do ask that if you're fishing for hybrids, do you catch one to check for a pink tag? It would be on the left side of the fish up near the dorsal fin. That means that that fish has a radio transmitter. We currently have a study going on for the fish's movement and location throughout the summer. And we ask that if you do catch one of these tagged fish, please record the number, call the phone number on the tag, and release the fish as quickly as you can. That's an update from the Northwestern Fishery District. Please remember, always be safe on the water and wear your life jackets. Hi, this is Eric Cummins with your Southwest Kentucky Fishing Report. Barren River Lake is at Summer Pool and the thermocline is set up at about 16 foot. Bass are fair on the main lake and secondary points and up shallower in the hours before daybreak. Hybrid bite is best after midnight and early in the day on flats. Green River Lake is also at Summer Pool and the bass fishing has been good on top waters early in late soft plastics in about 15 to 25 foot of water. Crappie have been good in about 15 to 20 foot. Musky fishing has been fair trolling on the flats with deeper crankbaits in 15 to 25 foot of water. Good smallmouth and rock bass fishing on Green River above Mammoth Cave National Park, on Barren River above Drake's Creek and above the lake. As always, good luck and good fishing. Be sure your life jacket's got your back. Fall is right around the corner and elk season will be here before you know it. And this is the time of year that antler growth is at its peak. Let's take a look at just how big these antlers can get. Wow, what an impressive animal. Sam Billiter, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've seen a couple pictures of this animal, but it doesn't do it justice. Standing here and, and seeing the, the mass and the, and the width of this is really impressive. 
Yeah, it's a gorgeous animal, once in a lifetime animal. Well, congratulations. Uh, this is the current state record elk. Uh, yes, it is. And uh, what, what this thing grows? 408? Uh, around 407, 408 is what it grows. And then it ended up netting. The this is the first Boone and Crockett bull elk taken in the state, right? Uh, first booked Boone and Crockett bull elk uh, in the state of Kentucky. And what was the final score? Final score was 392 and 08. 392. Now this elk here was taken obviously in 2016. Interesting way you got your tag. You actually acquired a tag by uh, working for a group that donated some property for hunting rights. Right. I work for a large coal company in eastern Kentucky. I've worked for them for about 17 to 18 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Fish and Wildlife Department has a program for 5,000 acres of, of donated property that allows uh, the community around you or people in the state or outside the state to have access to, to get drawn for that, to, to open it up for hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we did and, and acquired a couple of tags uh, for doing that. We did uh, 10,000 acres. And you had seen this animal some prior to the season, you knew that this animal was out there, didn't you? I've seen this animal a couple weeks prior uh, mm -hmm. to the hunt. You had some uh, video. I got got you... some video of it. Uh, this one actually just moved into the property probably a couple, two or three weeks earlier. It is a very impressive animal. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's companies like yours that allow access on the, really the reason we can place 700 hunters. We, that's what we draw now, is 700 hunters in 2017. If we didn't have the property to put some hunters, there would be no reason to draw a hunter if you can't put them somewhere to hunt. Right, well, you gotta have acreage, you know, these are roaming animals and they've gotta have acreage to travel on. Well, and I'll tell you what, for people that wanna come down here and, and, uh, and hunt elk or they wanna take a tour and see elk, Reclaim coal mines are the place to go, aren't they? Oh, it's a beautiful area. <laughs> this joker liked that reclaim mine land because he was fat and healthy, was he? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, what an animal. I mean, like I said, a once in a lifetime animal. Well, I appreciate you uh, showing me this animal and walking me through this, uh, this great hunt of yours. Uh, congratulations. Somebody's gonna have to really work to beat this one. Well, I, I'm, uh, it'll happen one of these days, <laughs> I'd say. Now let's go talk to a biologist about other opportunities for landowners. So Will, now that was an impressive elk. It was, really was. <laughs> I know, now you, you've been dealing with the elk program for how long? I've been working uh, since 2005 with elk in Kentucky and uh, full time in the elk program here in the state since 2011. So, is that the biggest one you've seen? That is the biggest elk I've ever <laughs> seen in Kentucky for sure. The interesting thing is that uh, Mr. Bilter was able to take that elk using a, a, a program that the Department of Fish and Wildlife offers to really gain access for all hunters. Tell me a little bit about that. One of the really successful program we've had, it's been running for around a decade now as a landowner cooperator program. Mm -hmm. uh, for that program, for each 5,000 acres that a landowner opens up to, to hunt and access, that landowner receives an elk tag. Now, of course, they have to have elk on the property before, before we'll sign that deal. There's another program you guys have too. You also have a program where an individual that may not have 5,000 acres, yeah. that has a good piece of property, they say, wow, we'd like to get an elk hunter on there. Tell me a little bit about that program. What's that called? Yeah, so that's our voucher cooperator program. Most of Kentucky is, is privately owned. It's predominantly privately owned, but not all landowners have 5,000 acres. So the way the voucher cooperator program works is a landowner uh, has to be a minimum of 100 acres. It's a harvest-based point system. The landowner receives points for harvested elk. Once they receive 20 points, that landowner gets elk permit for the following year. Uh, so a cow counts as one point and a bull counts for two points. So the good thing about it, is, especially for the smaller properties, is that the points roll over from year to year. Uh, okay. So for some of our smaller landowners, it might take them a few years, but we're happy to do that. And we're still taking landowners. Hey, that, that sounds great. Will, I appreciate you letting us know what the department's trying to do to, to gain additional access. I've always enjoyed my time in the field <laughs> with you, and hopefully this year I'll be giving you a call and come back down. I won't be hunting myself, obviously, but <laughs> I will come down here and we'll try to film a gentleman or a lady who gets a tag. So. Yeah, that sounds great. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here's Angelina Ferrigno who obviously really loves to fish. She holds this nice largemouth bass caught at a farm pond in Jefferson County. Here's James Blackburn holding a really nice bluegill caught in a farm pond in Anderson County. Nice job. Here's Cameron Henson with a nice largemouth bass that he took at a farm pond here in Kentucky. Congratulations. 
Here we have a familiar face. This is conservation education leader, Clay Brummel, who caught some nice crappie fishing in Hickman County. Nice job, Clay. Kentucky Field would like to wish all you fathers a very happy Father's Day. And if you wanna watch any of the segments you saw tonight in their entirety, you can find them on our YouTube page. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.